So this part of the agenda is the uh, discussion that I referenced around having, um, having a Having a risk five chapter in China, what, what, what could that possibly look like? So we've assembled, uh, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, and I'm going to see the discussion with a few questions initially. Uh, so this is around uh, the, the notion of, of regional chapters. Uh, as I said earlier, we want to establish a chapter in, here in China. We'd like one in Europe, and we'd like one in India. Um, and what exactly that looks like is part of this discussion and we intend it to be open. So uh, for each of the panelists, what I'd like you to do is uh, introduce yourself briefly and take a minute or two to describe why RISC-5 is important to you. Hi everyone. Uh, I just I gave a talk uh, this morning, so I think um, I, that expressed how RISC-5 is important for us. And um, um, so, uh, this why in China, I think uh, China is a very important market for us, and uh, we, as a CPIP vendor, from our perspective, think uh, uh, to get this why more popular in China, I think a dedicated vendor, with experience like us, can help to push the this why to um, a more crowd. I uh, definitely, uh, it is the case. So we will leave uh, more time for the other guy to, to speak. My name is Wingam Pao from ICT, uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. So um, actually, uh, we, uh, my student, uh, so I just uh, presented the label that we supplied this morning. And uh, so uh, this is a, a research project. So actually, we, 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 uh, we started the project several years ago, and uh, we used the Gym 5 simulator, and uh, uh, then we want to find uh, like an FGDA prototype. So which kind of, which kind of uh, um, uh, like a processor and an ISA is suitable for, for this research. And we found, actually, we, we tried many uh, different kinds of uh, ISA. We tried an uh, OpenSpark T1. So this is, uh, actually, this is a kind of a nightmare for us. So we spent a half a year to, 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 to tell to tell uh, the, the eight threads uh, and eight cores uh, 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 into one thread, one core, one thread. So but finally, we still give up. And then we choose microbrains. Uh, but microbrains still is not a uh, sort of IP, so we cannot change the internal, uh, the, the in core. So it's very, very, I see the research five is uh, just uh, the, uh, just a, uh, just a match and uh, meet our requirements, and uh, uh, we we then we um, finally we choose the uh, of five. Risk of five, I think this is the uh, perfect for uh, research. So we all, actually before risk of five, we also looked at uh, ARM, but there's also no open source ARM implementation. So I think uh, it's uh, so you know there are so many we have to, well, we have tried so many different kinds of ISA and uh, risk of five is uh, really uh, good for us. So actually in ICT, not our group uh, using risk of five, there are many other groups, they are used, uh, they, they use uh, risk of five. For example, there's one group, they use risk of five to do IoT, uh, to build IoT stuff. And uh, some, uh, my, my colleague, they are working on using uh, risk of five to uh, to do like the security and formal verification kind of things. I think that this is really uh, uh, helpful for this for research community. So and and also this is good for students and and it's how he actually he contrib contributed some uh, many codes into the, into the uh, risk of risk of five like Linux and kind of stuff and they they. He, they feel quite excited to to like to basically into a growing community. I think uh, he actually he 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 prefer to uh, working on the open source hardware to more more than publications. So usually I need to 
I don't choose the math team. <laughs> the math team, you need a publication for graduation. So that's, uh, I think it's, uh, that's a really exciting uh, thing for, for the research community. Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Gary. Uh, I'm coming from Chang Hong, uh, one of the largest consumer electronic companies in China. Uh, the reason why we are interested in RISC-V, uh, partly because of AMS, that's uh, uh, thanks for the uh, come over to Chang Hong, gave a great speech uh, yesterday and uh, had a deep discussion about risk of uh, Just give you uh, figures um, about why we are so interested in risk of uh, last year, uh, Chang Hong shipped around 10 million uh, TV units, uh, 5 million air conditioning and refrigerators, uh, around uh, 50 million uh, key components inside the refrigerator, and uh, around 40 million IoT modules. So last year we shipped around like, 100 million already, and we've seen a uh, very fast growth in that space. And this year, we're expecting for the IoT module only, we uh, ship like 60 million units. So all these units you know, will become smart devices, right? And uh, guess what? Right now, all the smarts to realize on arms. So that's not a good picture for us. So that's why. That's uh, the, uh, the driving force for us to uh, thinking, uh, looking out for the different uh, opinions, uh, options for us. So, so risk five, uh, thanks for inviting us here for our discussion. And uh, coming from the industry uh, uh, side, I think uh, uh, we have very strong interest in risk five right now. Hello everyone, my name is Zhang Shitan. Uh, I'm a former student at David Krista and I work uh, closely with uh, Yang Sub and Andrew for many years. I graduated a little bit earlier than that. Uh, after that, I was uh, in the industry, um, had been there working on a flat storage system. I was a farming engineer of pure storage, uh, making enterprise storage uh, using flash. Uh, but now, I um, got a little bit more back to the storage market. Um, so I decided to like, do my own business, and um, I'm a, actually um, at my own startup, uh, working on some emerging applications, um, IoT and the car, uh, something really called the driving candles in that field. Um, I want to do provocative designs. Um, this decision to choose Risk of Five is not because I am a new student, a crystal student, I work with those guys. It's really a business decision. And also the freedom that the ISA um, give me for me to architect and build better uh, product in the future. So, uh, and also partially my success will uh, a little bit dependent on uh, Risk Five. Um, I hope the community will grow and everyone um, to uh, adopt it. And also, uh, I think uh, given the current trend in China, and uh, we do believe the next uh, way we uh, send semiconductor will happen, they happen here. Given the amount of investment we have uh, in the past few months, I've talked to so many VCs and uh, business partners, and both small and big. So, kind of have some ideas uh, of what people want in China. And things actually work a little bit differently compared to the rest of the world, especially in the US. So, um, if we can leverage uh, the wave of semiconductor, so we can really make the respect happen. Hello, everyone. My name is Xiaoyang. I'm now a full professor, uh, professor at uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Uh, my research area is computer architecture. I graduate, uh, graduated in 2008 from Harvard University, and after that, I became the um, senior computer architect at NVIDIA Corporation, uh, doing the GPU architecture design. So I come back to China in uh, the year 2012, I become a full professor here, and my research mainly focuses on uh, low power design, GPU architecture and uh, various accelerator design, and also the emerging technologies. So I'm very glad to be here, and I think that this five did prove uh, prove to be a very important uh, and useful tool for our uh, research group. Okay, very good. So, um, so we have a <laughs> we have quite an interesting uh, uh, group on, on the panel. Um, Two from academia and, and very well recognized universities. 
uh, a semiconductor provider, uh, a large one in the Chinese market, a large systems company in the Chinese market, and an individual representing startup interests. So uh, the way that we've got the panel structured, I have one more question that I'm going to see for that. And we have Catherine here who will translate any questions that you have from the audience. If you're not comfortable asking your question in English, you can ask it in Chinese, and uh, it will get translated uh, for everyone else to understand with Catherine, and the respondents will answer in English uh, and augment it in Chinese if they, if they want to. So uh, as I ask my next question of the panelists, that will be my last question. And this is where you guys have to do a little bit of work and tee up some questions uh, for the panel, okay? So the next question, and we'll start again with you, Charlie, you can go first, is in, in, from your companies, and you, you, should be, um, uh, you should be very selfish in the way you answer this question, please. From your own company and your own personal opinion, what do you think has to happen to enable broader adoption of RISC-V in, in Asia Pac, and in particular in China? First, I'm not selfish. <laughs> so um, everyone, like I said, uh, open source is a very good platform for technology advancement and competition. So if we don't really hope that power portion will be here. So definitely, uh, the, I mean, every time you go to a standard community uh, or standard body, definitely you can play the one uh, once a while. Right? So, um, um, so, uh, but this is an art. How do, how do we make a uh, thing which uh, work for everyone and contribute that part, but we also need to reserve some part for our customer, and everyone need to, to live with that. So, uh, uh, but um, um, I think one guy mentioned that uh, they, uh, China had been uh, in the ship uh, a lot of uh, uh, components there, just uh, on, but there's not necessary to be on. I mean, Everyone should likely uh, to repair that part. So I think uh, I mean, risk five even though it's growing, is still a small part of the world, small part of the CPU IP industry. To go out to the world, we should get more market. So I mean, we're not we are here to cooperate, but we should compete in the rest of the world. So that's how we see. It. I don't know if I answer your question. That, that's your answer. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, for the uh, education and the research uh, community, so there are usually there are two ways to uh, um, to like make a, like a, uh, those kind of things uh, be, be be widely used. So one is uh, for undergraduate teaching. Uh, so, but this uh, I think yeah. in China there are. Many competitors uh, for this file. So actually, for example, we um, many universities they choose uh, different platforms for, for teaching. So some, some like ARM based, some like lonesome based. Uh, uh, but currently, there's no this file based uh, platform. But maybe in the future, that will be. Uh, an, that also could be an uh, option for, for investors. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's just hard for, for um, universities to, for all universities to choose one platform in, in China. So, but uh, for research, for graduate, graduate uh, research, I think that it is possible for this file to be widely adopted. So because just like, that's my experience, so, um, I think that if this file is uh, this is uh, open open sourced and uh, very easy to access and uh, we using it is very easy to use chipstyle to modify the chip. So I think this would be this could could be very um, easy for students to to uh, the, the, I mean the learning curve could be very very not a curve, not a sharp. So it's very easy to 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 learn. Uh, that would be a very uh, good opportunity for for this effect to be to, to be spread in, in China. So for graduate graduate uh, graduate students research, it's, uh, I think this is good topic. Um, 
Um, so uh, how, how can we make Risk of Five successful uh, in China? That's a question, right? So from the, the industry and business side, uh, strong needs for that kind of options. Um, as I said, actually right now, uh, Chao Hong probably is number one uh, in uh, IoT or shipping in China. And uh, also we have seen uh, fast uh, growth even beyond our own expectation. So, uh, from a business side, uh, of course, as a company, we, we are looking for the cost control and the customization. Right? And, uh, and IoT uh, business uh, is much diversified for the mobile internet that we are seeing right now. Uh, the requirements uh, comes from different angles, different features. So customization is a very neat feature for the solution. And also the cost uh, is humongous right now with the uh, uh, arms, the only uh, option available in today's uh, situation. So, uh, um, so I do see uh, uh, the, the needs, uh, demand for the different options very strong in China. Uh, uh, maybe I can also for China, but for Hong Kong, we do see uh, urgent needs for different options. Uh, to make it happen, I think probably uh, 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 we had a very uh, deep discussion with uh, David Patterson a couple of days ago. Uh, uh, with a lecture and a deep discussion. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, we have to make sure it works. Right? Uh, we, we can't ship a product which is full of a box, then we are screwed. Uh, so that is uh, number one, we have to make sure it works. And number two, we have to uh, make sure it's sustainable. Sustainable comes in two aspects. Number one, the technology can evolve itself to adapt the market needs. Number two, uh, we all know that uh, China is, uh, uh, is um, I, 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 I'm sure China right now is the number one supplier in the IoT markets in, in the world. Uh, we do need something that we are comfortable about the IP rights. So we, we already uh, have a lot of uh, experience with uh, proprietary IPs. So we hope we are, have a choice that we are not kidnapped by the IPs anymore. So I think for that to happen in China, we have to uh, build a trust. The trust, number one, is a trust in the technology. And the number two, the trust is the controlling ownership of the IPs. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, uh, uh, after the discussion with Dave, well, our chairman uh, made a, a very uh, bold decision. We are going to move on with Risk of Five, with one of our top selling chips. We try to make it happen as soon as possible. So you can see how how strongly we are motivated. Uh, however, of course, if if one year later we we uh, we come with a failure, a uh, failed uh, attention, uh, our attempt that would be a disaster for Risk of Five. So. Uh, that's uh, uh, my opinion. We really needed to work together to make the community in China, the companies, the uh, capitals, the government resources believe it's a trustful thing we can do in China. Okay, so before um, to answer this question, I would like to share a little bit of my experience, like talking to people, right? So. Um, when I, so when I start like trying to say I want to have a business working on this five chips, and easily for me is just to try to uh, convince some of the uh, big guys, some of them see you. So uh, would you like to work with me? So I provide like risk uh, five solutions to you. Um, those companies like in China, they're currently selling MCU, they're selling a lot of public companies. Um, but to be honest, uh, I talked to a couple of them. Uh, the answer is very negative. I say, okay, no. Um, we're happy with our but our uh, customers. They're using our their software ecosystems. We don't want to do that. And then um, I talked to um, some like uh, customers, right? So some like uh, ODM uh, providers uh, near Shenzhen, and they're, they're, they're trying to provide solutions to uh, a business like a China, people, like Shenzhen business, right? Um, and the time to market for that type of business is really fast. Um, they, they told me like uh, so at some point. 
uh, when you get uh, uh, when they're doing like uh, Shenzhen cell phones and they can finish from the concept to time to market to 21 days. So basically, what they did was uh, they tried to grab a solution out there on the market and then quickly. And um, those providers or manufacturers, they, they build some cases and then sell it on some market. Not in China, probably India or some other Asian country in Africa. Um, so they're pretty interested in this type of ideas. But again, so they mentioned one thing. Um, is that like in the past, we're just, just buying chips. And this three spy thing sounds really interesting. So we can have our custom chips. And um, uh, sounds like a Shenzhen 2.0 or something. Uh, but uh, one thing uh, they mentioned that uh, is there's, there's a trust issue, right? It's like what Gary said, um, if you won't have this technology out of or accepted by everyone, so you have the good trust between um, providers and your customer. So um, if you won't have this uh, successful relationship in China, you want to make sure the customer will feel this is, this is really reliable te technology or sustain, someone will maintain it. It's not like a private company or some, some of the companies and, and just support by itself. And um, later on, they decide not to do it. They hope they can have uh, uh, some, uh, they don't have supply issues if the thing is selling well. And um, they hope to have a, a kind of long lasting support. And also the other thing, um, most of the vendors like that is, um, they're not really uh, into technical stuff. They just say, whatever you apply to me, I just make a case and, and sell it. And um, so this brings one question, right? So if we have this three spy system, we have uh, so many vendors today, services, um, and also IPs and, and hardwares, um, can we really provide uh, some full stack solutions, application solutions, and provide the solution to this people who are really selling millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, and give them a much faster way of uh, time to market and competing with the existing systems, right? And also, uh, the solution by itself must have some values, right? Either cheaper, or low power, or something else. And um, you probably have want to have some, like say, uh, some like entity or run by someone and, and provide some training services to those those guys, right? Like uh, don't underestimate professional trainings. Or, um, there's a kind of profitable business and a lot of people in that uh, business as well. And at the same time, you want to provide the services to, to make a lot of people accessible. So um, if they say, I want to sell with five chips, and then you, you provide service to train those engineers and just help them understand how easy it is to uh, use the respect system, and how easy it is to uh, do an arm to respect um, transition. Say, uh, we probably have some entity, say, having some courses, say, let's just do uh, arm do uh, arm to uh, risk five in, in 10 days, or something like that. Like, <laughs> have some, some courses like that. And also, the other thing I figured out uh, is uh, doing business is it's actually uh, very different from the rest of the world, right? So most of the people, uh, they want to have a uh, real entity to talk to, right? They, they don't want to sound like a, a loose organization. They don't want to talk to uh, some people like they're running specs. They want to say, they have some problem, they want to go to someone, right? Someone with trust. Say, I want this solution, can you help me? And I want to use an example of some like the open source, uh, like open hardware community, which is uh, the, the one called OCP, Open Compute Project, run by Facebook. Um, actually, honestly uh, speaking, given the size uh, and uh, uh, they have uh, their uh, language too, right? They, they, they use the standard hardware convention centers. There are a lot more people, a lot more vendors than Risk Five Workshop. And, but it's not, honestly uh, speaking, it's not very successful in China. The reason why is because um, they don't have a real thing here. Like, say, if I want to have an open compute, uh, some project build for my own company or sell a product. There's no one like a support support this type of uh, um, sort of business. Although we have these vendors and in, in, in now, but you still need someone to talk to, right? We, now we are great. We have this uh, uh, a foundation, right? And so you can, you can reach it. But um, I remember last time, like uh, um, I talked to Gary, and he said, like, what can Risk Five Foundation help us to uh, enable this customizations, right? So this is a typical type of questions you will receive from 
than this. And the similar things, not just for big companies, but also for smaller companies as well. So I strongly feel if we want this respect to be adopted by everyone to reach to more people, the customers, you won't have some real thing here so people can, can, uh, can talk to, right? So there are a lot of successful examples, like OpenSec, and they have lots of companies like Hadoop from the software world. Um, they have their uh, many local companies and uh, local organizations, and even the latest foundations have the training courses. And uh, my question here is, can respect that foundation or respect China chapter provide some uh, training courses to a lot more people, a professional training? And I truly believe, given the professional training is a real business here in China, just by the training course itself, the, uh, the chapter or the foundation can self-sustain in the long run. So that would be my opinion. And I think starting from the university is definitely, definitely the right thing to do. However, I actually see a big difference between the United States and China. Uh, in the United States, almost all, almost every university has this computer architecture uh, area in the, either in the ECE department or the computer science department. However, in China, very few universities even offer these computer architecture courses to their undergraduate students, uh, not mentioning these research groups in, a lot of, uh, in many of the Chinese universities. So if you start from the university, you will feel very frustrated because there are very few research uh, people in the universities doing this kind of research. Uh, for example, I can actually I can hardly hire any good graduate students because not a lot of students want to do this hardware stuff. They always want to do this uh, software or internet stuff in, in China right now. So that's a problem. I think the same thing in the United States, but slightly better than here. Okay? So, but on the other hand, there are many, many IC design startups in China every year. And they get a lot of funding from the government or from the, 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 the PE or angel fund, and, and your funds. However, in the United States, I don't see that many of startups every year uh, for doing the silicon design. And also the market value for this Chinese startup in doing silicon uh, to this IC is much higher than the United States. So I think probably you should change your mindset from the university to the startups in China. And those startup companies, they actually want to build stuff, just uh, as this uh, gentleman just mentioned, they want to build the real stuff. So you need to pr provide them a whole solution that they can build the real stuff in one day, maybe in 10 days. Right, in China, that's the thing. So well, why everyone wants to be, because ARM has everything. And especially in China, you can get a very cheap or free version of ARM, very easy. So that, that's, that's, that's also different. So free, so you say you are open source, you are free, but free is not something that is important here. Okay, so that's so so that's not uh, the uh, that that's the thing here. So uh, so you want to do something? I mean, for the startup, right? Build them a whole solution so that they can build their products in a very short amount of time. So the second thing is, uh, you you said that the uh, risk file is open source, yes, but this open source is not like the open source of the Hadoop, like software open source. For software open source, my students can easily get the website, download the software, install them, and they can start to run new applications and build their own system very quickly, maybe within weeks. However, for the risk file, yes, it's open source. You can find the RT or you can find the whole tool chain, but how many uh, universities can take out this chip? How many universities can build the real thing? At least my group cannot do this kind of thing. So my students will ask me, hi, hey, professor, I." Played all the torching and I think it's perfect, but can I get a real chip? Can I get a real chip for free? So I know that what I have done is meaningful. So, yeah, so, but David, if you can provide us maybe just one chip for every university, every, every student, for one dollar, for example, maybe ten dollars, it's fine. The, FPG, yes. For our students, you know, the, the excitement they get to play with the chip that they built is completely different than the FPG. Everyone can do FPG. Hey, can the chip cost more than buying a cup of coffee? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if, if I can spend like $10 to buy a chip that the students, they made some contribution in, 
I think they would make them very excited. I think they would use this stuff for their entire life, if possible. So that's a different thing. The, actually, that, that's a good... Uh, I, Krista said in 180 nanometer, you can get 100 chips for $3,000. Yeah. I believe that's $30 a chip. Yeah. <laughs> so you did, you did. So, <laughs> so that's, that's. The, so do you do some, oh, cross text, 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 text. Don't textbooks cost $30 here? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that much in China. <laughs> Chinese government has billions of dollars that they're investing in startup yeah. I, I think at $30 a student, or $29 a student, they can afford a million students, right? Yes. They can they could make a million, give them a million students a chance to build chips. Yeah. At from 20, only $29 million compared yeah. to the billions that's they're investing in. That's exactly the that thing that we can do, that we can, like, have a uh, hundred, no, a thousand volunteers who donate, like, service dollars for your foundation, then you do the chip. We all stuff in that. No, but this, but I think, I, I believe China is, is uh, has its own unique set of strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, this is a very wealthy uh, country, right? This has a lot of money being invested in technology. This is, you're behind in technology, right? That's the one thing you're behind in, is in high tech. This is very important to your government. Yeah. If you want to get ahead in high tech, I agree with you, chip, getting a chip is very exciting. Yeah. This is a very small amount of money relatively to the money they're investing in these startups. They should have a program to subsidize that every Chinese, a million Chinese students can build a chip around this file using you know, older technology. <laughs> and and that's, that's not that hard of, this is like something, this is like Andy Yao could sell this to the Chinese government. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's that's not that much money, and it, they could really do it. So they, um, I talk with those government officials, these kind of people. Um, they're not very easy to deal with. So uh, although it's uh, you know education uh, related, um, I, I I think they'd like to see something more direct. So there will be years of congregation or at least that someone knows this problem, so they can do that. But so far, even for some of the companies, you're not very, it's not very easy to get it funded by the government. You have to do something first to show them there's some progress you spend and use the money uh, in a certain ways, then you can probably get some of the grants. So um, I think it's a more complicated problem. It's, I'd rather have this one run by some nonprofit organization or led by universities. Because uh, those guys, they know what students want, and a really, really low cost cheap that board uh, say we can probably start with the sci fi pipe those chips, and we build some of the cheaper version of that and sell it to everyone work with no profit, right? So um, to make people use that first, and there's definitely excitement about people touching the silicon versus that PJ, but they don't think it's a, it's a real some people. So we've obviously started the question Participation from the audience. <laughs> so go ahead and we'll, we'll go, we'll queue up your questions and we'll go to the audience. I think that uh, to getting every Chinese student or one million Chinese student to to uh, build their chip, and maybe that is a, a quite challenging uh, task. Yes, yeah. so I think. But it, actually, I, I see that another company of the uh, way is to to set up uh, like uh, a competition and uh, to attract uh, many. Chinese students to 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 uh, attend the competition, and then the competition provides some ways to uh, to uh, to uh, kind of, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it picture. Yeah. So. Okay. So we have. Active questions from the audience. Okay. I'll go back to you first. So state your name and who you're with and ask your question. Uh, hello everyone. I am Li Weima from Intel Labs China. I noticed that Intel is not a member of this foundation and I'm sad of that. And so I'm here for, on behalf of myself. 
Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And um, regarding that uh, uh, issue, and I have a suggestion, and I realize uh, I'd like uh, answer uh, comments. So I also suggest this idea to uh, Intel uh, DCG. Uh, because uh, uh, because of now Intel has uh, created uh, a terror and we are going to pursue business on um, FG as a service and cloud. Uh, so FG as a service. And I also know that we, uh, Microsoft and uh, Alibaba and the Tencent are also opening FG as a service on the cloud. Uh, so maybe that's a, a chance for uh, education if we can pursue uh, education on cloud. So um, uh, for the FGs, they are on cloud. So the, reg the students and the uh, education institute can, uh, can pursue some uh, machine, uh, uh, machine hours to, for their educations. And the students can also uh, register their own uh, account to, uh, for their practice. Uh, so the, the only issue is that if we can develop some infrastructure on the cloud, so we can compare the risk of fire um, very easily on the cloud FGA. And the students can write their own uh, chisel code and uh, compare the, the, the code to the cloud and see what happens there. And uh, so uh, and another advantage is that uh, the students' uh, projects, uh, the, the education projects, they can open source to the cloud. So every student, um, uh, they will uh, exchange their uh, work, so they can learn it from each other. So regarding the professor from uh, Shanghai University, uh, it's true that in China there are uh, only uh, Jiaoda universities and uh, and uh, Fudan, Tsinghua, and uh, uh, ICT. They can open the classes on architecture. There are a lot of uh, second um, uh, tier uh, schools. They cannot. Open uh, even open such kind of uh, architecture classes, uh, not even say uh, research groups. So if we can open source these kind of education resources on the cloud, and the, the students can run it uh, uh, immediately on FJs, that would be a good story. Uh, so I, if it's a good idea, maybe you can uh, spread this idea and uh, uh, promote. Uh, uh, such as country, uh, Tencent or Alibaba, they are going to pursue such kind of business. So maybe education as cloud is a, a first initiative for them to pursue. So maybe you can you have connections to do these uh, things. Okay. So uh, I just want to add to that. I think it's a great suggestion um, doing education around in universities. But uh, I still think educational like enterprise a long shot for risk fight to be really successful. You won't do something now because things are moving really, really fast, right? Because arms, you can see arm like they're reducing cost of their uh, entry level uh, IP cost, right? So uh, think about there are a lot of people not not just like taking classes now. There are people now today, about tens of thousands, or hundred thousand developers, invent developers. Um, make those people who are using arm chips now feel it's very easy to switch to risk five, and this is probably one of the Biggest problem for people, um, for the MCU providers today, is saying, I'm, I'm not going to switch to this five, I'm not going to build this five chip because uh, my customers are happy with the ARM ecosystem. So, have some professional courses uh, run, organized by the foundation, and uh, teach them, right? So, you can you can charge them just to break even, but uh, there are so many ways, right, to, to, to make people involved in this because this is still a very hot topic uh, now, and people like to learn what's really going on. Once they learn, it's so easy to switch, and um, you can see that if, you know the effect of switching from ARM to RISC-5 much faster. And given we have this, so many companies here and building RISC-5 uh, chips and IPs today, so leverage that, um, work with everyone. Any, any other comments on the panel for that question? Uh, I'm, a, I'm not a professor in the university, as I, I be very practical. Uh, if risk five want to be successful, I, I think the is are very critical. And uh, pay attention to two type of peoples in China. 
Number one is a type, a type of people like me represent a big company with a big shipping in the IoT. What do we want? Okay, understand what we want. And the second, really understand what the Chinese government want. So if you understand both, you will be very successful. Uh, okay, from my own experience, uh, I worked both in the Silicon Valley and I worked uh, uh, many years in China. And uh, I had a lot of projects going on with the Chinese uh, government and the state on the companies in China. Uh, for Chinese government, I think uh, you know, they, they want a lot of things, right? But uh, uh, to be simple, uh, they definitely want to, uh, this, uh, this country has uh, has the capability to compete, to compete in the world, okay? That's what they really want. And um, so that's why I pay a lot of attention on the high technology. I believe if China wants to compete in the world, they have to be uh, heavily invested in the high technologies. However, I do uh, also believe those technologies being massive uh, uh, are not uh, controlled or manipulated or uh, that have uh, no advantage uh, in terms of the ownership, in terms of the potential of the technology, and in terms of its uh, future development of the technology. So uh, that's really the government wants. There are three words that can summarize what the government wants. That's safety, security, controllability. So if you can provide this, then the Chinese government wants it. Maybe in China, basically. Okay, we have a question back here. Hi, I'm Larry Lapidus. I'm from uh, in Paris. And we do uh, virtual platforms of software simulation. From listening to most of this discussion, it's focused on the hardware architecture. And it, 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 seems, uh, it seems a bit... Uh, uh, tunnel vision, a, a bit myopic. Uh, if you want people, and, and a couple of you have talked about switching from ARM to RISC V, that needs to be made easier. And that can start actually in the university. You've got all these people interested in software. They're actually using FPGAs that have ARM cores on them, uh, or, or they're using ARM-based uh, simulators. It, there needs to be software courses in the universities, I think, for uh, RISC V. We've got with our Open Virtual Platforms uh, group, uh, which is uh, free free tools for universities. We have something like uh, a, a thousand different uh, students from uh, universities just in China that are uh, using our tools to learn embedded software development. And I think something like that will, will really help. As far as uh, the Chinese government, it, it, it's difficult to say what they want, but um, one thing I will say is that for every RTL developer, uh, there are somewhere around 10 different uh, software engineers that are going to be needed for the uh, uh, OS, for the firmware, for uh, the, the applications, for the security code, for everything else that's going to uh, run and, and use that embedded software device. And especially the testing of it, because if you're shipping 100 million devices, you need to test, you can't have uh, bugs. So if I were the Chinese government and I'm thinking about uh, engineering jobs, then I'm thinking about 10 software engineers for every one RTL engineer, and that would seem to make sense to me. That wasn't a question, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to refocus things. If, if RISC-V is going to be successful, I think software needs to be paid attention to from the very beginning. Um, uh, I'd like to steer the discussion in that direction a bit. So, um, I'm a Chinese. I want to say a little bit about cultural things uh, here. So, um, so one of the reasons um, I'm still young, right? so I don't understand the government thing very much. But uh, currently, one thing I can see is uh, Chinese, they want their own things, um, no matter um, what you have in other countries. Um, they won't make the risk five to be, you know, themselves, right? They want to say, this is our own technology and we're part of it. Uh, it's, they don't like the concept like saying this is, uh, this is like something from US, although it's a, 
from a non-profit organization, but if I understand correctly, it's a company, right? So you want to make sure um, respect is a technology and it's a real, it's everyone. It's, it's not, it's, it's developed by someone, but, but not necessarily it's tied to US. And that's, that's what the China government or the culture wants, right? They want, they want this to be real open. Real open to Chinese means they can control and own it. Any other comments on that? We have a question over here. Hi, I'm Alex from uh, Kudos and Tactor, and uh, my question is, what do you think the business, best business model for Risk Five it should be, especially in China? And uh, the special question for the uh, Chow Su from Anders. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And uh, my question is, what do you learn from uh, from from the competition with the arm in Asia, maybe a discreet question. <laughs> Thank. Um, as I mentioned in the morning, I think uh, uh, free arts are just a start start point. So uh, customer want uh, free uh, risk free SOC development. So um, because I mean the. Uh, Especially when you go to an advanced process, I mean, the mass fee is much more expensive than your um, IP uh, licensing fee, and also the royalty. So uh, I think a lot of customers don't really worry about that. Um, so uh, for risk file to be successful, um, um, I probably need to re reiterate what I mentioned in the morning. Uh, I think uh, this gentleman may also mention that because. Uh, they need something really robust, people like to take it and use it. If it doesn't work, and they will say, the research doesn't do it, uh, it isn't good. Right? So, uh, but uh, unfortunately, we are all in the same shit. I mean, everyone, if we are here doing a risk fire, and risk fire has a bad reputation, that probably affects everyone. Um, but uh, from uh, what I see we can do is, uh, when, it, when we have a risk fire product out, it's going to be Q3, uh, we, we do the same support that we had as our uh, previous generation. We need to have everything uh, packaged and do good, good support. And customer actually, especially in China, customer, uh, I mean, not general region here, uh, customer actually want uh, very good support here. When they have a question to use it, maybe not a problem, but they misunderstand something, so they like your support. So it, uh, it's really, uh, it's not really that their technical uh, is less capable, but their project more tight. So they don't have time to really understand your thing. Given a spec you see, they don't read it. They, they want the phone number, they call you. <coughs> so that's what we, uh, our experience is. And regarding uh, competing with ARM, um, yeah, some uh, the gentleman say that we need an assumption uh, as a migration guide from uh, one architecture to another. Actually, we have a couple of presentations talk about uh, how to uh, migrate from uh, 8051, also from ARM to end this. Uh, so uh, there are some differences, but majority of them is mindset. But still, you need to come out that kind of uh, migration guide. So um, to the people knowing, like, okay, we use C code, so we just use the C compiler. And so uh, everyone has a similar option. If you use GCC, you use a K compiler, that's a different thread. So it, it, that really sounds it. So I think uh, when it comes down to the ecosystem, uh, that's something uh, risk fire as a whole uh, community, we need to grow it, grow it, and we talked about that earlier. There's a lot of ways to do it for university, um, and the tech ship uh, have, uh, uh, for every student, so that more uh, user familiar with, with, uh, with it, more uh, third-party software uh, to, uh, to bridging it. And so, so that's a, something that uh, we need to do in a different direction. The other part is uh, uh, physical data. When we compete with real hard data, uh, we need to speak industry language. So right now, uh, maybe when different companies approach customers, they have different data. But for us, and for the, for, um, the public data there, we are, it's, uh, how do I say? Um, it's a data that customers want to see them together. So uh, you have to look at it through the arm and then you see whatever it's, it's this kind of data, what what it look like. Um, so uh, that what I have. 
I don't think that um, uh, Richard Five uh, uh, Hampton has uh, one kind of a feeling, just like in Linux, so we, uh, I, we, we, you know, see, we, I think a few people say Linux, uh, what kind of a business model of Linux? So we, actually Linux have been, yeah, have been invited in many kinds of uh, uh, products the uh, people, they produce. So I think in the future, maybe, this is probably just uh, also like uh, the, the Linux uh, as uh, uh, for the hardware systems. So, so people they easy to use uh, this file to build their system, and uh, they use their system to to open their market. So I think that um, that's uh, my understanding of uh, this file business model. So uh, maybe there's no business model itself. I like to answer this question because I, I talk to business a lot, asking me about business models kind of stuff. Um, just to be honest, uh, Risk Five is not a business; it's a technology, right? So, um, so for, for for us, like who are using Risk Five, it's not because this is a new. This is different from our maybe government will see from a different perspective, or uh, state-owned uh, 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 big corps will see differently. But for us, it's, it makes sense and enables us to do new things. That's the business model. Okay, so uh, this, is, this has been going for a while. We'll take another question. We're, we're, we're behind on the agenda, but this has been an interesting discussion, so I'll kind of let it go. But we'll, so we'll take one more, and then we can certainly continue over lunch. Uh, firstly, thank you uh, for, for this uh, wonderful event. I'm Wenbor. I'm from uh, uh, Shore Incorporated. We are a professional audio make uh, company, uh, and we have a lab in Suzhou. You I saw you guys have some audio feedback problems. If you use like short product, <laughs> you might get, you have a nice, like this house is good, but I think that's part of the um, questions I want to actually ask. Because uh, I'm hearing about that um, we should make this robust, make this solid, reliable, but uh, I might have some different opinion. It's from a, because comparatively, sure, it's still a small company. We have a very niche market. So it's very hard for us to get any like serious support from major semiconductor providers. And also like from uh, the point of view of the independent developers, it's also very hard to, for us to get some serious like I see that will support. We have to rely on the community and the market. So I would argue that because I, I, I would mention that already. I, I, I have spent some time on there is a, actually a software as a service course. Also, I think Dave hosted before, right? It's a mock. I think there is some ideas behind that that we should make this maybe not so serious business for this uh, MCU things and hardware things. We should make it fun again, and we should allow people to make mistakes, to integrate, to learn from their mistakes, and exchange even bad ideas, doesn't matter. We just give them some place to make the evolution to happen. So I don't know if you guys have any plan to like several things, like make a marketplace or app store for the IP course related to this five. So like I can download or buy some even very bad, the buggy IP course from my friends out there in maybe Denmark or Germany and put it together with this five and make it a barely work prototype but it's really fun and maybe it helps some people. It can be some just some toys. It doesn't matter. I think that's maybe one thing we can help as a community or foundation. Make it fun again. It's not so serious. I wouldn't know better. I'd swear you wrote the sci-fi business plan. <laughs> 
Any comments from you guys? Um, have you thought practically how would that happen, right? So you need some people really dedicated time to do that, right? You need people like most of the people on the on the community, the community, or foundations. Um, they have their own day jobs, right? They're they're it's it's basically part time, right? In order to that, do that, you need some bandwidth for prompts for some people really dedicated to do that. So I would advocate um, having some people just run this, this type of service profession, professionally. Uh, and uh, I do believe personally, there is the, you know education business here in China is huge professional education, and we can leverage some uh, successful stories experience from the software side to have this course going on just for professionals for people like you. So my question is, how much you, you can spend for this kind of project for the company? If I, I have some like open source course, barely worked, not guaranteed, 100% functional, but yes, if you are lucky, it works. If not, it's all your luck. Then how much you want to spend? You can spend for this kind of project. You mean as a boy or as a boy? The, the thing you, you, you just mentioned. Yeah, this kind of IT. Not fully yeah. verified, yeah, but sometimes it works. As a father of two daughters, I would say we spend, I think, no less than 100 million US dollars for Lego. <laughs> so how reliable is Lego? Yeah, you know, a one IC designer, one IC design engineer. Uh, I'm a, not an IC designer, I'm an amateur. Just love to make something in very low level. So for me, uh, like 2000 RMB as a toy project, I think it's acceptable. So you're talking about some proper card sourcing or something, right? You, if you had have one million people playing with that, everyone will need yeah, like yeah. 100 US dollars, then it probably works, but everyone has different requirements. They have different. Right, right. Right. So, yeah, so, I, I, I get your idea, but. Yeah, yes. it's, it's very familiar. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know the answer yeah. also, but I just hope that there is somewhere, uh, somewhere, some place I can get that. I saw my neighbors. They they didn't earn so much money, but they buy a brainstorm, Lego brainstorm. For me, it's like this is like barely works. It, it works, but the reliability is not the reliability. It's just Lego, and but it has everything. They charge like maybe. 20, 30 US dollars for LED blinker, something like that. They call, but, but just because they have the Lego, we don't have Lego brands here, right? But they charge so much, and people want to pay for that. I, I have no, I don't know why we should not have that kind of things in like with Bible uh, MCU design. <laughs> So uh, in terms of the quality of the things we provided, I think uh, it cannot be just like a toy. That will ruin your user experience. If you say, I just want to give the side, uh, give the try as a side project, and there's a chance I can make a production. Uh, we want to give out this type of uh, courses. Um, you want everything it's proved, and you have a great experience. If toy, I think it's on for academia, because I've been in this for doing real products, so it has to work. I agree that basic functions and basic costs should be solved just like Linux kernel, but only then also by so many people in the community, very smart engineers, but that what people need with Linux kernel. Just high school children can add something based on Linux platform. I'm talking about that the application, the application market. I agree that for and should be solid and open source. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll stop now. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting hungry. So, <laughs> for no other reason, Britt wants to eat. Uh, so, with that, we are we're, we're behind schedule, but I want, still want to give you the full hour for the lunch. So, we're going to run a little bit later into the evening, but not too much. Since we're supposed to all be here till 9 o'clock tonight anyway, it doesn't really matter. So, uh, please give a warm round of applause for our panelists.